all to Super Size and Grow Your Business. Sharon Horn Elson here with a makeshift impromptu visual aid of little bouncy balls that my granddaughter and I found in the park here in our hometown. This uh, tradition, I don't know how long it's been going on, it's definitely after my time, but uh, I know my nephews were participated in this and it's when they have Nerf Wars. The kids in high school form teams and have Nerf Wars and put in money and they actually make like couple thousand dollars the winning team so they take it quite seriously but there's a park right next to us where they have a lot of their matches and they just leave the cute little foamy balls nerfy gun balls around and my granddaughter of course being two loves them so she has me pick them up and collect them and she keeps them in the seat of her little ride-along car it's pretty funny so bouncing off walls of course this is a relatively new idiom it's been since the 1960s it, it's uh you know in my lifetime but Barely, I was born in 1960, and this is from the 1960s. And it either means to go crazy or to be so excited and so energetic and so frantic that you're almost hyperactive. Uh, it also could be literally from bouncing off walls and in sports, right? Balls that bounce off walls. Think racquetball. When I was younger, I played tennis. When I was younger and could see, I played tennis uh, competitively as well as in school. And... I used to practice against the wall in our barn or the barn door because it had all kinds of cross beams on it. So when the ball hit a cross beam, you never knew which direction it was going to go. So it was actually really good practice to be prepared and keep my feet moving uh, in terms of helping my tennis game. So bouncing off walls, how do we use this and why would we want to use this to supersize our, our business? Well, number one, no one will ever be more enthusiastic and excited about growing and building and supersizing your business than you will. Uh, I know that's a hard pill to swallow for some of us. We think everybody should love and be as excited about our business as we are, but they absolutely won't be unless we are and we share that enthusiasm, that excitement, that passion for what it is that we do and for the people that we serve. So number one, if you're not excited about your business, it's time to revisit and decide a couple of things. Number one, are you in the right business? Number two, are you serving the right people? Number three, do you want to continue and re-get your energy back and your excitement and enthusiasm for this business? Or do you need to do something different? Sometimes we need to step back and say, this isn't the right industry for me. This isn't the right business for me. It's a great business. It can make a lot of money, but I'm not the one to lead it because I'm not excited about it anymore. We change all the time. Hopefully we're changing and growing all the time. So businesses and industries I used to love and be passionate about and really excited about, I'm just don't care about them anymore because I was in them I did what I wanted to do and then I moved on to something different but when we are in a business that we love and adore there's always going to be excited periods of time and stressful periods of time so how do we get out of those stressful periods of time and how do we get excited about our business again one of my favorite ways is to revisit my why revisit the reason that you got involved in this business and industry in the first place and I actually do that really often in my businesses to make sure that I am on the right track that I am serving people to the best of my ability and I want to be doing what it is that I'm doing because if I don't love what I'm doing if I don't love the people I'm serving I know that I am not giving 100% of me to that effort uh, I did look up some things of how do you get re-excited how do you get excitement about something you're doing in your business and of course online most of those have to do with launching an online event or something and I contend nowadays that all of us need an online presence in addition to our physical businesses right we need to be able to create online events and promote those events launch a contest is another fun way I love contests there's a reason the retail industry has a sale for every holiday, everything, because they're creating events to generate interest and to get people's attention and bring them into their businesses and stores. Uh, ask for input from the people that you serve as well as the people in your organization. It, it always blows my mind that uh, some of the people I work with, usually in the C-suite, uh, see the problems in their organization, yet they don't go to the people that can solve those problems and already know the solutions to those problems by simply asking for input and talking to them. Uh, start sending out notifications and special sneak peek information about any event that you might be having. Uh, launch new awareness campaigns and for sure an awareness campaign a week before and I contend I have a whole strategy that I use to launch new things but 
at least a week before you're going to do an event, make sure that you're getting something out online in social media, flyers, whatever works for your business, uh, newspaper, whatever, where your customers are, go there. Um, and then we're going to advertise deals, technology, uh, sponsors, benefits to being, always benefits to participating or coming into our business, etc. So what do we do if we're, we're, our energy is fading? Number one, reconnect with your why. I always make sure that I'm reminding myself, why am I doing this? Is, is this the right thing to be doing right now? Right? Because sometimes we find that we're not working on the most important thing right now. We want to be able to readjust that in midstream and be flexible. Try something new. Nothing helps and help me. I, I spent 35 years in the uh, food manufacturing industry as uh, one of my side businesses. And uh, I would find that there were sometimes I wasn't super excited about the business, okay? I, I admit it. Sometimes I was downright down and thought, why am I doing this? Why don't I just sell this baby and do something else? But uh, what I would do when that happened is I would experiment with different products and I would add different products, you know, seasonal products or temporary products, or I would get super creative and make up different types of Italian food. It was an Italian food manufacturing business, Italian food products that we could sell, and I would test them. I had one, a couple of my customers that were test sites, and I'd test those different products. So we did all different flavors of ravioli. We even had a chocolate and caramel one, which to this day is still my favorite uh, fun one. Besides the lobster ravioli, we put all real lobster meat and a little bit of cheese in a ravioli. It was to die for, but cost prohibitive, right? It was too expensive to actually do commercially, so we didn't do it. But we did test it and play with it, and that always got me excited about that business again. And then uh, practice gratitude. I actually have gratitude journals, and I was just at my storage unit <clears throat> for the first time in two years, and I found a bunch of these little notebooks that I had created, and it says, what do I appreciate about? And I would say the name of my business, and then uh, I'm so happy and grateful now that blank, and I would use this gratitude journals, these little gratitude journals, to, for, I had one for each of my businesses, uh, and I would remind myself what I was grateful for, what was going well, and then whenever I got into one of these little energy slumps, I would just page through that book, and nothing works better than that. That and my awesome file, I think I've talked about that before, are things that will really help to keep you energized, give you a, a little boost when times are going well, and definitely help you to stay the course when times aren't necessarily going very well. Because stuff happens all the time in our businesses. And it's just a matter of moving forward. What's the next thing I need to do? And creating the business that we want. So we can set the example for other people that, yep, stuff's going to happen in the world, but it doesn't mean we quit and we fold up and die. And that's part of having energy and enthusiasm and bouncing off walls. And you don't have to be bouncing off walls, although some of us naturally are. Uh, as you're growing and building and supersizing your business, but you do have to be excited, enthusiastic, and positive about it if you want other people to feel that way too. All right, I'd love to hear your take with this particular idiom if you've had experience with it. I have definitely been accused of bouncing off walls before in several areas of my life. <laughs> have an awesome day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye.